Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Vonderhaar. Joining us on today's episode, Matthew Gershaw, VP of Commercial Strategy over at DID. Welcome, Matthew. Thanks, uh, Steve. Very great to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, uh, DID is in the business of making digital human avatars. Tell us exactly what those are and what technologies are needed to make those digital human avatars. Yeah, absolutely. So a digital human avatar, kind of what it sounds like, it's taking all the, you know, the elements of, of you know, uh, really photo real, genuine looking humans. So we're not talking about kind of CGI and, you know, game type avatars. We're looking like really hyper realistic, photo realistic. They, they sound like people, they, they're really realistic sounding voices. And they have the smarts behind them of, you know, these uh, large language models. So they they can talk to you, they can converse in very natural language. And of course, we have to do that very, very quickly. So it's a very low latency, it has to be, you know, encourage that flow of conversation. And the next kind of stage on which we're looking at this year is adding a kind of more emotional, you know, uh, element to them that they understand the emotions that are coming from the other side and also are able to reflect that back. So that's kind of what digital humans are as we describe them. And obviously the technology for that is incredibly complex as you'd imagine you're pulling together you know a number of different technologies to you know move the head lip sync the voice have the voice sound really realistic um and obviously the intelligence that stands behind them as well so kind of the brain the heart the, the face you know the, the the whole kit and caboodle comes together into one space a kind of you know multimodal mashup of technology that we've pulled together to make this happen in real time. Yeah, I guess people have been dreaming about digital avatars ever since the Max Headroom days. Uh, what makes a <laughs> good uh, human dig or digital human avatar as opposed to one that's not so good? How do you differentiate yourself in the marketplace? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you're talking to the right audience. I'm old enough also to remember Max Headroom. Uh, and obviously technology's come on a long way from then. And actually, there's this thing that, you know, they call it the uncanny valley where, you know, 98 percent there actually isn't good enough. You've really got to be, you know, 99 or 100 percent, you know, real. Otherwise, kind of we reject it. We don't, you know, as human beings, we don't like to see that. And that's that overcoming that uncanny valley is really what we've been focused on for the past, you know, six or so years since we've um, been looking at this space, um, you know, bringing together all those uh all that technology and, and making it and doing it we, you know we're real face specialists we really understand not only how the face moves but also how we perceive the face and the bits that we kind of look at not every uh part of the face is kind of as concentrated on by you know by the viewer as as every other part so we we're real experts in bringing all those things together and making it seem not like max headroom but making it seem real yeah, and the uh, uh, end users are pretty fickle. If they if it's one or two percent off, they're going to tell you about it, won't they? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's you know the uncanny valley. If you get it a, just even a little bit wrong, it just feels terrible. It's almost better to be you know completely synthetic and look synthetic. But so you've got to really you got to really work hard to to make the these digital human avatars seem and feel human. So how do enterprises use these uh, digital human avatars uh, in day-to-day -day applications today? Uh, where, where, do they, where are they put to use? Yeah, so I guess you can imagine everything we currently do in, in enterprises and imagine it now instead of it being written down, uh, that it's something you can interact with. So as an example, you know, every company, every large company has an HR handbook. It's pages and pages uh, of of either you know, a physical handbook or it's online, very opaque, quite difficult to access. Um, you know, if there is a search thing, it might you might not hit on the right search term exactly for the thing you're looking for. Well, imagine that now, that same handbook, but you could just talk to it. It becomes a person that you can talk to and interact with and get the information you need in a really natural human way. You're you're talking and you're chatting to that playbook. And the same is true really across business. So, you know, presentations, we, we, you know, we're in this era, been an era of PowerPoint for 20 years or more. But imagine now that the PowerPoint presents itself. And not just that, but you can actually quiz the PowerPoint afterwards. So once you've had the presentation, you can follow up with questions to the digital human avatar 
who presented it and they'll know everything that uh, they need to know and answer your questions. So it's a, it's a great, um, you know, it's great for training and learning and, you know, a- anything really that requires a, that level of human interaction. And I guess like the rest of the world, you've had your eyes on the AI marketplace over the past year or so, if not longer. Uh, and you're starting to uh, play around with the idea of uh, integrating AI into the digital human avatar space. Tell us how that war- would work and what does that allow you to do what kind of application cases does that open up for DID? Yeah, so we very much feel like we're affiliated with these, you know, the rise of these large language models that have come about. But whereas large language models are very much text-based, we we bring that new interface. So whereas the the LLM is the OS, we think we consider ourselves to be that, that more human interface. You can turn any text that comes out of a large language model and turn it into a, a human talking to you is so much more natural um you know it's the reason we're speaking today by video and i'm not just t- talking to you on an email it's a more natural way and it helps you particularly engage with with uh customers helps you engage with your your own teams and and your people uh anything where you need that kind of engage a level of engagement this is you know an incredible step forward in technology and it's all based on ai yeah, and I think uh, in our past conversations, you've referred to it as the natural user interface. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so I guess we we like to think of ourselves that this is you know this is a, revel- a revolution, a kind of inflection point. We've had we had in the in the early days of computers text user interface. We then moved to graphic user interface for you know which we've had since the eighties. You know we've added multi touch for our mobile devices, but fundamentally the user interface hasn't really changed and. We feel like being able to talk to your machine, talk to your spreadsheet, talk to your PowerPoint, talk to whoever is going to be a much more user-friendly interface. This is the journey, really, that we've been on since the beginning of technology to try and, you know, get the computer to talk on our terms rather than having to learn to navigate and scroll and go to submenus and, you know, be, you know, work on the computer term to get the information and the uh, the experiences that we want to get. So yeah, we call it NUI, natural user interface. And that's the, you know, the revolution that we're spearheading. And uh, uh, it sounds very science fiction-y, but really there are some applications that are valid and viable for the enterprise. How, how do you see these NUIs starting to impact uh, how uh, AI solutions and data is consumed in the business environment? Yeah, I think there's, you know, any any number of ways. I, I think when you think about customers, for example, you think about that customer journey from, you know, marketing to them, to selling to them, to onboarding them, to, you know, helping them uh, and supporting them once they are a customer. Across that whole chain, to be able to bring to bear this kind of more human technology is going to be a massive improvement, improve cast, customer satisfaction. Uh, we think it's going to improve conversion rates. Um, and we think it's going to allow, you know, allow businesses whole new lines of business. So that's sort of one end of it. I guess there's another end of it, which is, you know, I think they will become advisors and, you know, uh, helpers for us in in any number of ways of which also businesses will be a part of that. So I know you've used the phrase before, you know, uh, uh, enterprise learning model. It's like, the, sorry, enterprise language model. Um, and I think that's that's kind of really interesting way forward that if you're an insurance company or a legal firm or you know uh, even a, a telecom healthcare you will be able to offer your users these uh, advisors and helpers and allow people to get way much more from their business you know the business that they interact with than they've ever had before and when you get those targeted data sets that you can build the uh, digital human avatars on top of you sidestep all that uh, messy copyright issues uh, that are emerging for LLMs right now. If you're working just off your own data set and you essentially have an in-person, uh, your in-house uh, uh, digital advisor, uh, that could be a good thing, can it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are any number of ways now to stop these large language models kind of hallucinating. I mean, that's one of the things that, you know, one of the downsides of them has been that they're very effective at, at giving you information wrong information but very convincingly yeah and i think there's now the focus has been on you know either training that model right from the start on your data 
or these, you know, they call it RAG, retrieve augmented generation, that there's a vector base between the user and the uh, large language model that, you know, contains all your company information and, you know, grounds that data in, in the information you have. And, you know, one of our products now that we've just in beta at the moment called Agents allows people to, you know, upload PDFs, docs, PowerPoints about their business so that when their agent is uh, interfacing with their customers, it has the right information to hand at the right time. So it's, I think there are a number of ways we can do it, but uh, yeah, that's definitely the next frontier. Yeah, now this sounds like uh, some great use cases that you're developing. Uh, does DID aspire to develop all the applications under its own umbrella, or uh, do you see yourselves more as an avatar arms dealer for other vendors? <laughs> I don't think we definitely don't see ourselves as an arms dealer. But um, that, that aside, yeah, we we, we do. We, you know, our, our, we're a platform company. The core of our business is our API. Everything we do is API first. So while we do have products that we uh, we put out there, they're all based on our API, which is incredibly robust and you know, has to hold, you know, has to take uh, hundreds of millions of uh, uh, of calls, you know, over over the time we've been using it. Um, but we do create these products from time to time, and one of the reasons is we're we're very early in this space. It's a very early market, and we need to do quite a lot of market education. And one of the reasons we do create these products from time to time is to kind of give people an idea. It's very hard for people sometimes to really imagine what's possible. So we show them what's possible by creating, you know, some of these products like like agents or our, our, our um, human digital avatar studio that allows you to create content kind of on the fly. But fundamentally, we're, we're API based. We're a platform. We want to yeah. work with other businesses. And uh, if, if you get other vendors as part of that partner network, that will really be illustrative that uh, the adoption of AI and avatars is becoming uh, more widespread. Uh, any thoughts on how you really get that partner network to flourish uh, in the next year or two? Or is it just a matter of having the technology vendors uh, begin to recognize applications for AI and avatars on an integrated basis? Yeah, partnerships is super important for us uh, in 2024. It's a real focus for us. We know that our customers want to come to us and get, uh, you know, an end-to-end -end solution that requires us partnering with all sorts of other players in the market. And likewise, we also want to partner, you know, with some of these larger players, you know, people like the large language models, the big tech companies, to empower them to do more. You know, we've got a very, really super advanced technology. We can fast forward their journey as well you know, by, by a number of years. So yeah, we, we're very much about building out that ecosystem this year. Uh, it is some uh, forward looking things that you're working on right now. It's going to be fascinating to watch DID's progress over the next year or two. Uh, you're really uh, sitting on the frontier of uh, video technologies in a big way. Uh, Matthew Kershaw, yeah. thanks so much for taking the time to, for visiting with us today. No, not at all. Thanks so much, Steve. It was uh, super interesting. Great to speak to you. And our thanks goes out to you for joining us for today's episode of Intelligent Video Today. To get access to more insight from industry thought leaders like Matthew Gershaw, please uh, subscribe to the YouTube link right below there and get access to the Intelligent Video Today channel. For Intelligent Video Today and Intelligent Research, I'm Steve Vonderhaar. Thanks for your time.